Welcome back. Welcome back. Here we go again. Let's let's continue with the, what will be hopefully a wrap up video of turn one. Uh, I know I've posted quite a bit uh, about this particular game and and the gameplay as I'm going through it. Some of it me noodling my way through it. Others just uh, sharing with you what's going on. And I think it's hopefully uh, instructive as to the level of involvement in the game, the number of decisions that you may possibly get to make in a given turn. And, uh, you know, it's certainly by doing all that video and really sort of digging into the rules to make sure I was playing it as accurately as possible, uh, it certainly did make the first turn take a long time. And uh, I also think that probably in turn one, that would be the case anyway, that it would take a significant m amount of time to play out turn one. Uh, you know, there's a lot of counters in task forces over on task force sheets and there are aircraft on airfield holding boxes and then you've got the bits that end up on the map and stuff like that. I tend to put more stuff on the map than off the map. So that will uh, sort of make things look busier or less busy depending on the, the point in the turn that we're at. Sometimes I find if I, I leave stuff over off on a in a task force, I forget a task force holding box. I forget to do something with it, or forget that it has you know <laughs> a helicopter there or uh, marines or whatever the case may be. Anyway, so NATO turn went very very quickly because there's not a lot for them to do. It's, it's they're kind of between a rock and a hard place, and most of their stuff is happening off map. Uh, they're moving convoys to. Uh, the European theater. There are some things that we'll sh I'll show you in a second up in the northern sector of the map that are going on that were mildly interesting. Now down here in Denmark uh, with the initial invasion, the Soviets and the Poles elected to not send in the airborne because of the immediate role that had to take place that forced the surrender of the Danish uh, forces and I, I kept that role because that's the role that happened and and I wanted to do that but what I wanted the reason why I wanted to do the replay of the whole southern section of turn one which is another reason why I took a little bit longer is because I don't think we we gave a good accounting of the Danish capabilities nor did we give a good accounting of what the uh, subs and aircraft and air superiority could execute on or, or deliver for NATO. And I think what they ended up doing was pretty substantial. So I, I've taken the dead units off the board and I'm not going to go get them. But, you know, we we uh, sunk uh, either two or three landing craft. We reduced the step count on those landing craft, uh, other landing craft. We put a lot of hits with our naval battle between the Danish Navy and the Soviet Navy, this task force here. Uh, put a lot of hits on uh, on them, uh, which did raise a question that uh, I could potentially have taken this third task force. And as, uh, as this intercept was happening, there could have been some other things that could have gone on. I could have brought this task force, which had uh, surprisingly... Uh, you know, robust forces in it, you know, we could have, uh, we could potentially re-engage that Danish force and gone through another naval battle, but they're going to surrender anyway. So didn't see the point and roll a bunch of dice to no effect. Uh, it might have been fun to do it, but uh, good narrative experience, but I'm, I'm actually trying to play the game and not just wallow <laughs> in every little uh, uh, minute detail here. So <clears throat> these videos are long enough as they are. Now you may wonder why there are still a couple of Danish units on the map, right? Well, in my uh, my view, I don't believe that everyone would give up, right? So I've elected to allow one HQ and one measly little, uh, well, it's a brigade, but it's really understrength brigade, hence the minus sign. So it's basically a battalion plus of forces to hold the airport. The poor old Brits got stuck here. They, they landed, you know, hoping to help out. And the formerly strong, aggressive, 
invader oriented Nordic tribes have caved like a bunch of girls with wet underwear and they uh, so now the Brits are stuck in Copenhagen by themselves holding the port and as long as they can do that or the, 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 the longer they can do that the better uh, they did the, the Poles landed here with uh, three battalions the Soviets lost half of a half a division uh, through sinking of shippies, of transporters. Uh, so that was very expensive for them. So they now only have those guys. So you, maybe you could argue, hey, I probably should have tried to land the paratroopers here as well to knock these guys out more quickly. I can still do that next turn and we'll, we'll probably do so if I need it. What I wanted to do was capture this port uh, intact not have to attack it because I'm going to have to repair it to do so uh, to use it and then transport in a significant division break it down a little bit here and then hold that hold the Copenhagen in perpetuity uh, as they say so that's what happened there so that was really the the crux of the NATO turn uh, they decided to stay it put and, and hold out I did I did assess doing an attack here Probably wasn't going to work out very well, given that there was air. So there were there were there were air uh, escorts and interceptors available here, so there wouldn't have been any air support to conduct an attack. It was probably going to end up at being a one-to-one -one attack, and even with the maximum DRMs, it was still more than a fifty-fifty chance of a, a poor result for the. Uh, for the, the Brits. So the 45th Light Force or Light uh, or Land Force, whatever it's called, I forget what the specific uh, acronym is. I think it's Light Force. Uh, so a couple of uh, different um, combination of forces that were kind of squished together, but uh, nevertheless, they're, they're going to try and hold out there for a while. They do have some supply on this ship that I need to have landed, but I haven't uh, unloaded it yet. Uh, I could probably sail that guy away is probably one thing I, I should do. Uh, but once again, if I do do that, then they would run the, run the gauntlet of all these task forces potentially trying to intercept them and sink them. So I'm happy to sit in the port for the time being and then maybe if the 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 um if the uh, Soviets want to come and attack that they can. Okay, let's move up to the north have a quick look up there. <coughs> and I'll try and be a little more succinct up here. Uh, this was interesting because the on board the onboarding to the map for uh, carrier groups is here and you can hold a carrier group there and then you know fly in and support stuff and drop things off there well that wasn't going to work out for me because let me just come back over here all those red stacks in the ocean are subs and i didn't want to run the gauntlet of uh, being att attempted intercepts after seeing how well they worked for for the NATO side, I thought, let's, um, my stand is sagging. Can you see the camera slowly moving? That's just it deciding where it wants to, <laughs> wants to end up. Uh, so I moved, let me see if I can do this. I moved, ah, you piece of, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna struggle here. All right, I guess we're just gonna do this then. Uh, I moved the invincible onto the map from the, I guess that would be the western edge of the map, through the N1 line of communication, one, two, onto the map. Didn't have the range, uh, based on how the movement costs work, to get into this town here, which is called Bodo, and it's a port. Uh, but nevertheless, I've got this unit ready to land. I've got Sea Kings that we can... Uh, take advantage of with some nice decent ranges going for them here. Uh, I've got the Norwegian fleet here to kind of reinforce this. I might uh, suck in whatever I can from here into this task force, which has a limit of 15 ships, uh, but we'll pull some extra anti-sub capable and uh, missile capable units into that. And then once we drop off these Marines, 
I think we're going to try and press our luck down into uh, Narvik in, oh, which is off screen because of the camera. Uh, Narvik down here as well. Uh, meanwhile, what I will do is try and uh, heli transport the the Marines into here to reinforce it. We didn't do too much here. We just uh, jiggered a few units around to make a couple of decent stacks, move these guys into some rougher terrain uh, so that they can slow down this uh, potential advance here. And uh, I still have these guys out in air support, so they're, they're gonna need to go back to their holding box in a little bit. And then next turn, I, I was also trying to get these guys out of here. I was trying to ship them out, but I just could not get through to them without running what was going to be the gauntlet of three or four uh, sub intercepts, um, which brings up an interesting point. You know, I could have tried to sh sh uh, use the LST to go up there and get it, sucking in these guys to make uh, uh, an intercept, and then maybe uh, that would then that uses up their one intercept for the for the turn. That would have perhaps potentially allowed me to bring the invincible on in this area here. So I, I'm not sure how that, uh, whoops, what the best way to do that would have been. Uh, but there, once again, lots and lots of choices here with, uh, with the gameplay. So one of the other interesting things was that, you know, as these Norwegian reinforcements come on, they have to come in on urban areas. So let's see, there's, it's an urban area here it's almost impossible for them to get up to back into this area uh, because it's that was a mech unit and was the last it was the I don't know why that guy ended up there but basically that was the last place I could put him um, for a variety of reasons I, I didn't get I only got I think I only got one unit maybe and, oh, that's right. I think it was only one spot available where he could go, and that was the only spot, and he was the best unit. So I brought him on here, and unfortunately, because he's mech, he couldn't come this way uh, because of the mountains and stuff. And I think all the other units that couldn't come on are lost, so that just is what it is. And so he went down to try and reinforce and support this uh, this sort of attack that's not going well for the Alpine, the um, Marines. I think they are, or Paras, I can't see from here. Uh, what the you know whatever they are their attack there is not going terribly well against that tiny little battalion so hopefully that'll slow them down even more and that my friends is the end of the turn all I've got to do now uh, I think I've moved everybody no I haven't I've got to put these guys back into the ready mode there's some other forces that are being flown around and doing stuff so we'll put them back in the ready mode no repairs yet for these guys. I don't believe I can do that just yet. I've got to check the rules on repairs and we'll kind of, we'll kind of get going from there. All right, I'm gonna let you guys go and uh, get reset for turn two. We'll start out with doing the external events and the uh, Guick Gap and the Kiel, uh, whatever it is, the Kiel Canal stuff and uh, the Finnish front. We'll do that and then we'll do some, a significant amount of planning to get the Soviets to get their asses in gear and work out how to knock out these pesky Norwegians. All right, fellas, later.